Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We come to remember, we come to celebrate the lives of those who have paid the ultimate price, who have laid down their lives for the sake of our brothers and sisters. They've laid down their lives to protect our communities. As we begin our celebration today, let us recognize them in our memories and in our prayers and ask the Lord's pardon and absolution for the transgressions which we believe in. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have promised to be one with us in your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring us. The first reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, no one lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. 
For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brother? Or you, why do you look down on your brother? For we all shall stand before the judgment and the seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an accounting of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and to bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The 19th century French writer, Jean-Baptiste Carr, coined the phrase, the more things change, the more they remain the same. As we reflect upon his words, we realize the truth in his saying. As I was preparing for today's reflection, I thought of the many years we've gathered here in Will County to remember and to honor members of our law enforcement community who have paid the ultimate price for their desire to provide safety for our citizens. Going back to 1865, there are 36 men and women remembered today. We remember their lives. We remember their families. We remember their courage in carrying out their daily duties. As we look throughout history, it seems every generation faces challenges. Unfortunately, many never learn from the past, and those challenges repeat themselves over and over again. These past few years seem to be a time of self-reflection for members of the law enforcement community. Department committees evaluate policies and general orders have been updated. Officer training requirements have also been revised. Police are faced with new state laws, which make their work more difficult. Soon we will face the consequences of criminals being released without bond. There's no doubt, and every one of us would agree, that these are challenging times for members of law enforcement. A year ago, I talked about the unprecedented attacks on police, both physical and fiscal. Most departments continue to be understaffed, and they struggle to carry out their responsibilities to their communities. Last year, 472 officers lost their lives in our country. Eleven officers in the state of Illinois are remembered. But their sacrifice was largely noticed by many, but unfortunately unnoticed by many media outlets. Today we come together to remember the 36 men and women of Will County, members of law enforcement who have died in the line of duty. Their stories are many and varied, but we cannot forget the men and women of our police departments who continue to face on a daily basis serious injury and permanent disabilities. They do that fearlessly while carrying out their activities, responding to calls, and doing what our communities expect them to do. Statistics show us the dedication of men and women of the police departments and the outstanding jobs that they carry out daily. They carry them out without headlines and without anyone seemingly really ready to show their appreciation. No one seems to notice their outreach to the community and their dedication to protecting citizens of every color and creed. The good that police officers do is overlooked and underappreciated. The police officers are here to serve and protect, even in the most difficult situations. I've been there when officers were confronted by angry groups and disorderly mobs. If they're expected to remain calm amidst gunfire, rocks, and countless items being tossed at them. Grandstanding before cameras and quick criticism needs to come to an end. Criminals need to be accountable for their actions. I can tell you from riding with officers what they have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. They're no longer respected by lawbreakers. But we know that the solid majority of citizens really do support what you do day in and day out. 
In spite of negative headlines, there seems to be a growing support of police in many areas of our state and country. They appreciate your commitment to protect our God-given freedoms. While we are here to remember those who have offered their lives for the sake of our communities, we're also here to offer our prayers for all members of many agencies, Will County, state, federal, throughout our country, members of police departments at home and abroad. We offer our prayers to God that he may embrace them in his care, give them direction and guidance, give them wisdom, so that all that they do may be done because they desire ultimately to please God. Because we know that we all have to give an accounting for our lives. After all, God knows all things. When a police officer stands before the Lord, the Lord will express his appreciation for what they have done. He will welcome you, he'll congratulate you, Come and share in his joy. Come and share in eternal life. Come to a place where there's no more fear and no more doubts, no more uncertainties. That's the consolation that you have, the consolation that ultimately the Lord knows, and the Lord will reward those who defend our villages and cities. He will reward those who work for the betterment of our community.
so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all, to lodge you even more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people, and all sing your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mary Magdalene, with St. Bernard, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we may lie for unfading help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity of pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained through your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased with you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have been viewed with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to the of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in the right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you now and forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Good afternoon, and welcome to this year's Will County Law Enforcement Memorial Summit. My name is Commander Anthony Novak of the Plainfield Police Department and the current president of the Police Chiefs Association of Will County. Today, we remember and honor those officers who made the ultimate sacrifice in the service of our communities. On behalf of the organization, I would like to thank the family and the friends of our fallen officers who are in attendance with us today. I would also like to thank the staff and students from Ira Jones Middle School that are with us as well. At this time, I would ask the Joliet Police Honor Guard to present the colors. Immediately following the presentation of the colors, the national anthem will be performed by Special Agent John Paul Olivero from the Illinois State Police. I would ask that everybody please rise and remain standing throughout the process. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce Plainfield Police Chaplain Dick Wisdom, who is here with us today to offer the invocation. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you today for this opportunity to come together, to remember those who have given the ultimate sacrifice to protect the lives of others. Lord, to those who have been there, Nothing compares to the heart-wrenching screams of Officer Down, except perhaps the torment of a family opening the door to see two fellow officers of their officer, standing with grim faces and tears welling in their eyes as they convey the heartbreaking news their loved one is not coming home. Lord, how does anyone comfort this family? Like Jeremiah, they wail, my grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. 
There are no human answers to satisfy or soothe their agonizing wounds of grief, anger, and sorrow. Only you can provide comfort to their very souls. We ask you to surround them with your love and the love of others in such a way that they feel your presence. Bring others to their side who have experienced their pain and understand the deep ache in their heart. And we'll pray with them and for them. Father, you know the fellow officers who mourn with the family, especially those who were with the fallen officer. Remove them with the repeated nightmares of asking themselves what they could have done differently or why it wasn't them. Lord, we know you have implanted in the hearts of brave men and women to choose a profession that requires them to walk into danger and put their own life on the line to stop lawlessness, lawlessness and crime. You've given them a willingness to enforce the law to protect the communities where they serve. We know that you motivate them and we are grateful beyond words. We ask that you embrace and protect them and their families as they face evil and the tough parts of everyday life. They see the worst of people and people at their worst. I pray, Lord, for their safety, draw them into your embrace, and fill them with the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. We're going to take a quick recess. Just give us a couple minutes, please. It is my pleasure to introduce this year's keynote speaker, retired Chicago Police Superintendent Phil Klein. In a brief police career that has spanned more than 39 years, beginning as a cadet in the Chicago Police Department in 1968 and culminating in his appointment as superintendent in 2003, Phil Klein has held assignments in the patrol division the Narcotics and Gang Investigation Section, and the Detective Division. He also served as a task force officer for the Drug Enforcement Administration. Born and raised in Chicago, Superintendent Klein enlisted in the United States Marine Corps and then joined the Chicago Police Department as a cadet in 1968. He became a patrol officer in 1970 and quickly achieved the ranks of detective and sergeant. He was promoted to the rank of lieutenant and assigned to head the Violent Crimes Unit. He was later promoted Commander of Detectives and later Commander of Narcotics and Gangs Investigation Section. Superintendent Klein was promoted to the Deputy Chief of Organized Crime in February of 2000. A year later, he was promoted to Chief of Detectives. He served as the department's second in command prior to serving the city as superintendent from 2003 to 2007. Superintendent Klein retired from the Chicago Police Department in August of 2007 after 38 years of service to the city. Superintendent Klein played an instrumental role in establishing the Chicago Police Memorial Foundation and serves today as its executive director. His fundraising efforts built a world-class memorial honoring Chicago's fallen heroes on the city's lakefront and continues to raise funds to support the families of the fallen and severely injured officers. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Superintendent Phil Klein. Thank you, Tony. Let's just take a minute and offer a prayer for the priest. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you for inviting me to take part in your ceremony. As we pause to reflect on the sacrifices made by so many brave law enforcement officers here in Will County, in Illinois, and throughout our nation. The month of May is always a bittersweet time for the law enforcement community. As many of you know, the month is filled with events, tributes, and commemorations to honor the fallen the brave men and women who have given their lives in the name of keeping our communities safe. During this solemn event, we reflect on friends and loved ones whose end of watch came suddenly and way too soon. We recall the pain, the grief, and yes, the anger that we've all suffered when a colleague, a partner, a friend, or a fellow officer is taken from us so senselessly. We are reminded once again that a family's grief over their fallen loved one never really ends. It's something they learn to live with for the rest of their own lives. 
But for all the sadness we experience at events like these, we also find comfort in the bonds we have built with our fellow law enforcement officers and their families. We are also reminded that we are all part of a noble profession that despite what you may be hearing these days is defined by honor, duty, bravery, and professionalism. We are inspired by the strength and courage of the survivors, the husbands and wives and the sons and daughters who remain with us and carry on with the heavy burden of knowing their loved one was taken away. And for all we have endured, the grief, the loss, the pain, our faith in this profession, and in the hundreds of thousands of brave men and women who do this difficult job is restored. So as we gather here today at this sacred memorial, we bring mixed emotions, but we also bring resolve to continue to work we are doing to honor the fallen, extending a helping hand to their families and supporting officers on the job right now. The officers working in our communities today are facing unprecedented challenges. There are more illegal guns on the street. Violent crime is ticking upward. More, most disturbingly, there is a growing animus towards peace officers and the work they do. I am very concerned that the wave of anti-police sentiment going on in our country today is eroding the respect we all have for the work our police and law enforcement officers do. It concerns me so much that the erosion of respect for police officers makes officers less safe from individuals who want to attack our profession by attacking the men and women who represent it every day. Last year we saw an unprecedented increase in the line of duty deaths for officers according to the National Law Enforcement Officers Fund. While COVID related deaths are responsible for a 55% increase compared to it drove the numbers up, a closer look at police murders tells us an alarming story. Last year the number of officers killed by firearm increased from 45 the year before to 61 last year. That's a 36% increase. Most troubling is the fact that 61 officers killed by a firearm, 19 were killed in ambush style attacks. There were just six such police murders in 2020. These types of assaults suggest the offenders are targeting officers simply based on the work they do or the uniform they wear. The increase in officers being targeted comes at a critical, critical time for policing in the United States. Many are questioning the role officers have in protecting communities and are calling for greater efforts to strengthen the relationship between officers and the communities they serve. In this conversation about police and community relations, there is plenty of room for debate, discussion, and even disagreement. But no officer or his family should have to face the threat of violence based on the fact that they chose a career to protect and serve their community. So what can we do in response? The short answer is a lot. But to me, the best answer comes from our Chicago Police Memorial Foundation motto, which is never forget. There are many things we can do to ensure that we never forget the sacrifice that these officers make in our name. The presence of this memorial with the name of Will County's fallen heroes etched in concrete is one way we can say never forget. The names of these men and women will be here forever for future generations to see. Sadly, this list of names will inevitably grow as more officers are taken from us. Another way we can never forget is to support officer safety initiatives in our own community. Let's make sure our officers have only the best, most up-to-date safety gear so when they do encounter danger, they become less likely to, to survive an altercation. We can also never forget by acknowledging that officer well-being is officer safety. Along with officer homicides, officer suicides are also on the rest, rise on, uh, as the job becomes more stressful and dangerous in almost every way. There is no doubt that the challenge of this job is inspect our own mental health and that of our loved ones. Let's make sure that we support officers' efforts to get more mental health resources to officers and their families. The bottom line is that we are not doing all we can to keep our men and women safe in every way we're letting them down. To the families of the foreign officers who have joined us at this ceremony today, I would just like to take a moment to thank you for your sacrifice.
I've had the privilege of working very closely with the Chicago Police Gold Star families over the years. So I know very well the kind of strength, courage, and determination all of you have. The lessons you have taught us amid your grieving are so valuable and inspiring that it only strengthens our resolve to never forget. We have a saying at the Chicago Police Memorial Foundation that really resonates on days like today. When thinking about the heroes named at this memorial and at police memorials throughout the country, it is better not to dwell on these, how these officers, men and women, died, but it is for how they lived that made them heroes us all. Thank you, God bless, and God bless all our Gold Star families. Thank you, Superintendent Klein, for your inspiring words of encouragement and support. At this time, the Lockport Police Department Honor Guard, accompanied by students at Ira Jones Middle School, will present the memorial wreath. Joseph Clark, 1865, Joliet Correctional Center. Francis DeLong, 1896, Joliet Constable. Ernest Mueller, 1924, Frankfurt Constable. Walter Weiss, 1924, Joliet Police Department. Walter Fisher, 1926, Will County Sheriff's Police. Peter Klein, 1926, Joliet Correctional Center. John Murphy, 1927, Joliet Police Department. Carl Dubson, 1929, Lockport Police Department. Frank Schwartz, 1930, Illinois State Police. John McCabe, 1933, Illinois State Police. Ernest C. Ware, 1941, Will County Probation Department. Edward McCasey, 1944, Stateville Correctional Center. Zolt Skaggs, 1944, Stateville Correctional Center. Louis Barney, 1954, Joliet Police Department. William D. Miller, 1954, Illinois Conservation Police. James Nink, 1967, Crest Hill Police Department. Richard Warner, 1969, Illinois State Police. William Loscheider, 1970, Joliet Police Department. James Ziegler, 1973, 
Stateville Correctional Center. Jeffrey Hopkins, 1975, Joliet Police Department. Peter Bird, 1977, Stateville Correctional Center. Dennis Foley, 1983, Will County Auxiliary. Steve Mayer, 1983, Will County Auxiliary. Martin Murin, 1984, Joliet Police Department. Raymond Topolowski, 1985, Will County Sheriff's Police. Henry Washington, 1986, Illinois Youth Center. Daniel Jarima, 1988, Lockport Police Department. Son Trung, 1988, Stateville Correctional Center. Lawrence Cush, 1989, Stateville Correctional Center. Robert Kalowski, 1993, Illinois State Police. Tim Simonson, 1994, Crest Hill Police Department. Aaron Hill, 1997, Illinois State Police. Terrence Loftus, 2004, United States Drug Enforcement Administration. Jonathan Walsh, 2004, Joliet Police Department. Tracy E. Cooper, 2010, Stateville Correctional Center. Kevin J. Brewer, 2017, Will County Sheriff's Police. Ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a rifle salute, which is going to be three rounds. So for those of you with uh, sensitive ears, just be cautious. Thank you. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy signed a proclamation which designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day and a calendar week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week. Today, we have honored those heroes within Will County and the entire country who paid the ultimate sacrifice while performing the duties of the most noble profession. For those names on the memorial, their deaths remind us again of the difficult and very hazardous tasks we ask our law enforcement officers to carry out every day. Sometimes they must perform these duties in unfamiliar surroundings. Sometimes they must deal closely with the most destructive and unpredictable elements in our society. Frequently their work is as routine as anyone else's. But all officers know, without a doubt, that someday 
perhaps even today, they may face danger and even tragedy. Even knowing the risks associated with the profession, which may lead to their death, those officers each day put their uniform on, pin the star to their chest, run towards danger, not away, and answer the oath they were sworn to carry out. For those names we honored earlier, and for all those names inscribed on the National Law Enforcement Memorial, your service and sacrifice will never be forgotten. At this time, I would like to introduce Plainfield Police Chaplain Tammy Roach, who will offer today's benediction. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, as we gather today to both honor and give thanks for the men and women who gave their lives to serve and protect our families, our homes, and our neighborhoods. Help us to remember, to support, and to pray for their loved ones, their friends and co-workers, and our communities who have one less servant protecting our streets today. Help us, Lord, to honor the loss of our brothers and sisters by always serving with honor, humility, and professionalism. As we depart today, may the strength of God sustain us, the power of God preserve us, the hands of God protect us, the way of God direct us, and may the love of God go with all of us, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Roach. On behalf of the Police Chiefs Association of Will County, I would like to thank everyone for coming today. I would like to personally thank the committee members who facilitated today's memorial, specifically Joliet Police Department's Chaplain Father Graw, retired Will County Coroner Pat O'Neill, Lieutenant from the Joliet Police Department Joe Avela, and Lockport Police Department Deputy Chief Ron Huff. That will conclude today's ceremony. As a friendly reminder, the police chief's meeting will be held immediately after at Bicentennial Park. Thank you all for coming. God bless. <laughs>